Ray Fillion is our national parliamentary reporter in Ottawa. Ray, Finance Minister Bill Morneau is making headlines again, but it has nothing to do with the recent fiscal update, is it? He's still in the hot seat, uh, Hal. You know, he wanted to talk about something else, uh, change the channel on Tuesday by, uh, you know, tabling uh, what was essentially a good news story. You know, uh, the economy is doing great. Deficits are going to be lower than expected. But he hasn't been able to change the channel, unfortunately for him. Uh, the opposition and a lot of people still want to talk about his alleged conflict of interest. And he's taking step after step after step. Um, to calm everyone down, to try to show people that he's honest, that he's not uh, in a conflict of interest. Remember a week ago on Thursday of last week, Mr. Morneau formally announced that he was going to divest his shares and the shares owned by his family in Morneau Chappelle, the company founded by his father uh, back in the 1960s. Uh, he also announced that he would put finally uh, his assets in, into a blind trust. Uh, today, he met uh, this morning with the uh, Federal Ethics Commissioner, uh, a meeting that lasted almost two hours in his office here on Parliament Hill uh, with Mary Dawson, the uh, Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner, uh, after which he went to the House of Commons and he announced that, you know what, the money that I made, thanks to my shares in Morneau Chappelle since I was elected uh, as a member of Parliament two years ago and Minister of Finance, well, I'm going to donate that money. Those profits will go to charity. Uh, he hasn't said which charity yet. Uh, he just said that he and his wife want to help out um, uh, refugee women uh, go to university. But it's done little once again to, to, to calm this storm, this controversy. The opposition is still up in arms in the House of Commons, demanding that Mr. Morneau uh, go even further. They, they, they say that he, he shouldn't have put himself in what they call a blatant situation of conflict of interest by tabling, among other things, a bill, C-27, about a year ago, that has to do with the way pensions are managed, while at the same time owning shares in a public, publicly traded company, Morneau Chappelle, once again, a company that manages pension plans. So it's a blatant conflict of interest, according to the opposition, and I think that Mr. Morneau is not done uh, dealing with that, unfortunately, for him in the House of Commons. A lot of people here are wondering, how long he's going to be able to stay on as Minister of Finance. Don't forget, right. it's, it's a very, very important position in any government. He's second in command to Justin Trudeau, after all. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Let's shift gears for just a moment here. People with diabetes are unable to get their tax credit. What are you hearing from in Ottawa there? Well, I can tell you, Hal, that the uh, Ministry of National Revenue, who's uh, in charge of this file, didn't look very good this week. Uh, the Conservatives and Diabetes Canada came out publicly on Sunday afternoon. They held a press conference here on Parliament Hill to talk about the situation, to expose it publicly. And the next day, the uh, Ministry of National Revenue, uh, Diane Le Boutillier, uh, told reporters she's been aware of the situation since last winter and that she doesn't understand why these people are being denied the, uh, the this this tax credit. Right. She says she's changed nothing in the law, nothing's changed in the interpretation of uh, Canada's fiscal law. So she says she doesn't understand uh, why they're not getting the money. We're talking about a $1,500 a year tax credit for people with type 1 diabetes. It's a serious condition. These people are forking out a lot of cash to get their medication. And she doesn't understand what's going on, but the bottom line is these people are still not getting the money from Ottawa that they're entitled to. Now, the Bank Your of problem. Canada announced its decision to keep the interest rate at 1%. For those of us like myself that have uh, lines of credit, you know, that, that's good news. But why no increase this also time? also if you have a mortgage, yeah. And a mortgage as well, well that's they right. Say they want to wait on uh, the economy to see where it's going to go. The Canadian economy, as you know, Al, is doing much better than expected. Uh, the last uh, budget in, in March that was tabled by Minister Morneau, uh, forecast a, a, a growth of 1.9% for the, the current fiscal year, uh, we're having growth in the range of 3.5%, 3.7%. Uh, that's what we ha we've had over the past uh, 12 months. As you know, in the past six months, the Bank of Canada slightly increased its, uh, its target overnight rate by, uh, zero point, by 0.25%, so it stands at 1%. They want to see where things are going to go with the economy. There's lots of unknowns. The economy is doing well, as I said right now, but we don't know in the long run. There's one thing that's worrying a lot of economists. It's NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, all those talks with uh, the Trump administration. 
we don't know which way it's going to go. We don't know if the uh, if NAFTA will survive uh, those talks that are ongoing at the moment, uh, and that could trigger a recession. We don't know. So the, the Bank of Canada has decided to take a wait and see approach. It's interesting how we talk about the economy rebounding here in Canada. But yet Sears Canada shutting down its stores across the country. The liquidation sales have begun. As a matter of fact, I even swung by and picked up a new pair of shoes myself. Only 20% off. I'm like, come on, what's going on here, right? They say, wait about a week or so. But now Sears retirees are demanding more protection from Ottawa. Can you explain? Yeah, that's a serious problem. Uh, the situation is that Sears bankruptcy is leaving roughly 16,000 retirees across Canada uh, unsure about the future of their pension plans. And they say it's not just about their own pension plans. It's 1.3 million people across the country could be in the same uh, situation if, if nothing changes at the federal level. They're demanding uh, changes in, the, uh, in, in federal laws to make sure that the uh, uh, pension plans across Canada and group insurance plans are protected when a company goes belly up, uh, like Sears, for example, when a company goes into bankruptcy. There's already a bill being studied in that regard uh, on, on Parliament Hill. It was tabled a little while ago by the Bloc Québécois. We understand that the NDP is also preparing a similar bill, but uh, things have to change according to Sears employees. They fear for their, not employees, retirees, uh, they fear they may no longer get their pensions uh, if, if the law is not, isn't changed and quickly. Now, numbers from the recent census just came out, and it shows that Canada is becoming a lot more diverse. Absolutely. Very interesting numbers. You know, our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, keeps repeating every chance he gets that uh, diversity is a source of strength for our country. Well, we're becoming more and more diverse. I mean, 21.9% of all Canadians today were born elsewhere in a different country. Uh, we haven't seen a proportion so high since the census that was conducted back, back in 1921. Wow. And the big difference between today and 1921 is that in 1921, almost every single immigrant that would come to Canada, uh, they'd come from Europe. Right. Not so anymore. Things have changed. I mean, we're talking about over 61% of newcomers to Canada who've come from Asia and the Middle East, 13% have come from Africa, and only 11% uh, came from uh, Europe. So there, you know, it's no wonder that uh, there are more and more people in what we call uh, you know, the groups, the so-called visible minorities group. Uh, that group is just uh, increasing in size. They were representing only 4% of the population at the time of the, uh, the first census that you know, started counting people in that category, 4% in 1981. Uh, they, they now account for 22.3% of the Canadian population. And according to StatScan's projections, they could represent between 31 and 35% of the entire Canadian population. And we already know that in Canada's major cities like Toronto and Vancouver, and perhaps to a lesser degree, Montreal, uh, visible minorities are now the majority, it certainly is the case in Toronto. It, it, it has been for a few years now. You know, what's interesting is I've talked to uh, various refugee families who have moved to southern Alberta here and asked, why didn't you choose the United States? They view Canada now as the land flowing with milk and honey. And it's a lot safer here. We're more yeah. tolerant. You know, it just seems like Canada is more the destination of choice compared to the United States. And more and more immigrants are choosing to, to, to go to the prairies, to go to... Uh, you know, Eastern Canada, the Maritimes, as before. Uh, you know, the, usually, up until a few years ago, most of these people would settle in Canada's largest cities, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. But now they're settling across Canada, so things are changing. Yeah, it's very expensive and, yeah. out there, too, Toronto and Vancouver, like you mentioned. Now, Quebec yeah, has a bill help. on religious neutrality, which is having repercussions at the federal level. What are you hearing? Absolutely. It's Bill 62, the bill on religious uh, neutrality. Basically, what the Couillard government in Quebec wants to do is uh, force anyone providing a public service and receiving a public service uh, to remove their veil. So they, right. they don't want women, for example, uh, Muslim women, to wear, uh, to have their faces covered. They want to have everyone show their face. Uh, it's, it's having repercussions here at the federal level. Justin Trudeau came out a few times in the past weeks, uh, in the past uh, week or so pretty strongly against uh, that bill in Quebec. Uh, he's hinted that his government may go to court. Uh, he hasn't said they will, but uh, he's hinting that they might. Uh, he says it's, governments across Canada should not be in the business of telling women, telling people in general what they can and uh, cannot wear. Uh, wear. Uh, 
Uh, but the premier of Quebec uh, says uh, that bill is necessary. It's a question of common sense. Uh, don't forget, uh, Hal, uh, Quebec is in an election year. They're going to go to the polls uh, in less than a year from now. And the two opposition parties in Quebec City, they're very much in favor of legislation of the kind. In fact, they, they think that the Couillard government is not going far enough. So Mr. Couillard, I think, is doing what he's doing right now for political reason. He doesn't want to have his government seen as doing nothing on that front, which is a very sensitive topic, not just in Quebec, but across Canada. Now, and speaking of which, too, a recent uh, study came out and polls said that 87% of Quebecers are in favor of Bill 62. So it should be interesting to see what happens. Now, you're talking a little bit about our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. He was a little surprised the fact that they won that recent seat, the by-election in Quebec. A lot of people were surprised. I mean, Lac Saint Jean, there was a by election to replace the outgoing MP, uh, former uh, Conservative cabinet minister Denis Lebel. Lac Saint Jean is a riding in rural Quebec, smack dab in the middle of the province. The Liberals hadn't won that riding since the early 80s. So in 35 years, they hadn't been doing well. It's a riding that went to the Conservatives, to the Bloc, back to the Conservatives. And lo and after two days, painting by the prime minister in that writing on uh, uh, Thursday and Friday of last week. They pulled an upset on Monday night. They won the writing for the first time in over 35 uh, years. Uh, on Tuesday morning, the next day, the day after the by-election, many liberals here on Parliament Hill personally told me that they were still pinching themselves. They couldn't believe they have won. And what this means, Hal, is that the, the liberals, the Trudeau liberals, are still very, very strong in the province of Quebec. It's a very important province province. Uh, when it comes to a national election, uh, roughly 23% uh, of the seats are in that province, 78 seats total uh, in Quebec. So a lot of people were telling themselves this week that uh, in all likelihood, the Liberals are going to be in power after the next election. So six more years, maybe, God knows what's going to happen. You know, two years is an eternity in politics. A lot could happen between now and 2019. I'm not saying that the Liberals are, are going to win the next federal election by any stretch of the imagination. But it certainly looks like their chances are more than good at this point. Well, wow, that's at incredible. Least. Our national parliamentary reporter, Ray Fillion, joining us from Ottawa. Thanks so much, Ray. Always a pleasure, Hal.